made it. I'm at the top of Crib Gok Ridge. I've just climbed the eastern side from Penny Pass Car Park, which you should be able to see just down there, near where my finger is. The eastern side is pretty steep. It's quite a challenging climb. It's not for the inexperienced, but if you can climb, and if you're not scared of heights, definitely worth the effort. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite places on earth by far. It runs east to west for, I don't know, a mile or two that way towards the summit of Snowdon. Not quite sure what the plan is for me today. I've got the whole day up here. I'm going to wild camp tonight. Get a load of photos and videos throughout the day into sunset, sunrise tomorrow, and then head home. Camping will be that way somewhere. I don't know. For now, I'm going to take it easy, get some time lapse on the go and take a slow walk along the ridge and just see what takes my fancy. It's difficult weather conditions for time lapse because the weather is so good. <laughs> it's usually the other way around for me. Clear blue skies, no clouds, very little wind. There's not much movement. So I'm not sure how time lapse photography is going to go. I'm going to have to make some really long ones, but that's fine. I've got plenty of time. Hopefully I can get some moving shadows on the ground or something. I don't know. There are no clouds. I don't think there are forecast to be any clouds either. So we'll see how we go with that. Now it's time for a bit of ridge walking. It's quite busy up here today. There are a lot of people. It's almost like a queue coming up the mountain. If you look down there. So this is the ridge that we've got to walk along. There are various ways to do this. Some people come down the left hand side about six feet or so and then walk along scrambling like that. Or if you're a bit braver, you can walk along the top. But the drop is, well, a little bit steep. You wouldn't want to fall down there. But it's not too bad. If you're going to fall, go left. Something that I wanted to talk about in my vlog today was quality and quantity. Since making the Trafan video, I watched another few vlogs of landscape photographers, professional landscape photographers, which I am not, just to make that clear. I do video for a living, but usually live, usually sport, usually aerials. This landscape photography is a bit of a hobby. I do make an income from it, but percentage wise, you know, it's probably 10 or 20% of my total income. So it's it's something that I'd like to get better at, but it's a small part of what I do. And I'm by no means an expert. And I've been watching some other guys, professional landscape photographers. And one of the things that struck me was that these guys quite often go out on a long trip, hiking, walking, wild camping or whatever. And they come back with one image, one sublime, fantastic image. Whereas on my Trafan trip, for example, I came back with 9,000 images. Okay, so that was time-lapse photography. And of those 9,000, it was probably 20 to 30 compositions, plus a couple of handfuls of what I thought were good images. The difference between me, who goes out and, all right, I don't go into full tourist mode, just shooting everything. But the difference between me and someone who does landscape uh, photography professionally is huge um, but one thing I would say is that quality over quantity right everyone knows that but also quantity is often a quality something 
that you should remember. So don't feel bad if you're like me and you go out doing landscape photography and end up shooting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things because um, that's what many of us do. We're not fortunate enough to be able to just go out and shoot one image. We need to fill our portfolios full of good quality things, but rather than walk around stressing and analyzing compositions, I tend to walk around places like this, where I am now. I'm about halfway down the ridge. I see something that I like, which is, well, I'm struggling for time lapse today with very little cloud movement and nothing else going on, but it's the reflection on the water um, maybe some change in shadows in the time lapse from sunlight moving across. Maybe the shadows will extend this way. Maybe the reflection will move. I've done 10 seconds between the exposure. It's going to be a nice long time lapse. But I just walk along, see that I like it, shoot it. I don't analyse it too much. And I go home with lots and lots and lots, 9,000 plus images, probably more today because I'm out for a little bit longer than the last trip. But anyway, quality over quantity, but quantity is sometimes a quality. I'm about halfway along the ridge. This is the way I've just come from the east side. Tripod perched quite nicely in the middle, looking that way. I'd quite like to shoot something down the ridge, but there's lots and lots of people coming. I'm going to shoot this, shoot a few more, rest in this little shady spot, which I found. Nice little drop behind me. I'm not bothered about that. And see you a bit later on. I'll probably be, probably, I'll probably be headed up that way. It's up there where I'm going to wild camp, but it's only about midday, so plenty of time yet. Right, I'm off. The light is almost too good for a walk in the mountains but it's no good for photography. It's the middle of the day, so I'm gonna take a break for a couple of hours. I'm gonna head this way. I'm gonna go and have a pot noodle. Very important to keep your calories up. Get a pot noodle on the go. Not a bad ridge. Beautiful place. Don't let the views put you off. I always think that the GoPro makes it look worse than it is as well. It's steep, but it's not dangerously steep. It's all right. Come to Kribgok. Come and visit if you haven't been up here. If you're not scared of heights, come and give it a go. This is a tricky bit. So about halfway across, I think it's called the Pinnacle. It's a bit further down here, but Last few times I've come here, I think I've made it harder for myself than I should have done by taking poor routes. I seem to remember one point where it feels like you can make it easy for yourself by going left and around, but then you come to a point where it's a vertical climb. So I'm gonna try and avoid that this time. So this is the tricky bit. This is the bit where I struggled last time. I went down, left, and tried to go around, but this is ridiculously steep. So I think what I'm gonna try this time is go down, left, and around, and then to the right behind this first stone. And hopefully it's not as steep and doesn't involve as big as a climb as the last time I came here. Because to be honest, it felt a little bit uncomfortable to say the least because these drops are pretty substantial right that's the first stone done and this is where I think I went wrong last time. I think I went down there and around the left-hand side and then I had to climb my way up. This time, I'm gonna try and climb this bit here instead. Not sure how that's gonna go. We'll find out shortly. Whew. 
Ooh. My heart's going. That is crazy. All right, I've done the tricky bit. Pot noodle time, definitely. And then nice, easy descent here, and then up to the next summit. This will be a great place for sunset. The sunsets on that far side out over the sea. So it'll be a nice position for that. So I'll probably camp on the top there. I am now a very happy chappy with a king size Bombay bad boy pot noodle made with the jet ball. If you haven't got a jet ball and you're into camping or hiking, get a jet ball. Ball's water in about two minutes. I found some shade. I can't believe that it's September in Wales and I'm complaining about it being too hot and too much sunshine. This mountain peak over here is Trifan. Trifan, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. That's where my last video was. That's the peak that I climbed. For anyone that hasn't seen that, go and check it out. It was pretty cool and it inspired me to make this one. I had a lot of good feedback, good comments, likes and shares and all that kind of stuff, which I was really pleased with. Um, and I enjoyed watching it back myself. That's the main reason for making these videos is that I enjoy watching them back. Uh, maybe they'll be helpful for anyone who's considering climbing these mountains and ridges to uh, look back on uh, and get some information. So I'm gonna have this pot noodle. I'm gonna sit here in the shade for a bit Play on my phone, there is phone signal here, surprisingly. There's been no phone signal all the way up, and then 3G at the top. So I'm gonna sit here for an hour or two, chill out, and see you. Little drone, it's just flown overhead. About two hours ago, I finished that pot noodle, and since then I've been sat here in silence, with no one around, no wind, it's perfectly calm, just admiring the view. I'm not sure where the time's gone, to be honest. I do have a little problem though. I'm running out of food. I didn't bring enough with me. And so controversially, I know that if I walk up that summit there, along the ridge and up to the summit of Snowdon itself, there is a tourist center and they will almost certainly sell food. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Like one of those rumors you hear of when Ray Mears or Bear Grylls goes out into the wilderness and then they're caught eating and sleeping in a five-star hotel overnight. That's going to be me. I'm going to go to the tourist centre and try and get me something to eat. Otherwise, I'm going to be starving. Um, and then I'm going to see you back on the other side of this peak towards sunset for some more photography. All being well. Well, that was rather pleasant for a wild camping trip, stopping for a nice hot Welsh steak pie. Now it's off for some more photography. The good news is that there are a few clouds appearing on the horizon, which could work in my favour. This is the route that I came up this morning. There's Crib Gok, right across the ridge there, up and around, and up to Snowdon Summit just behind me. Lots of people trying to get down on the train. I am being frazzled by the sun. We 
which is why I'm hiding behind this big summit stone in the shade because this idiot went into the mountains on a beautiful sunny day with no sunscreen and no hat. I usually go everywhere with a baseball cap as well, especially on shoots. I always wear my baseball cap, didn't even bring it today. So I'm hiding from the sun. I've got a time lapse on over there. I've set it for about an hour and I'm gonna sit here and close my eyes and probably nod off to sleep because I'm absolutely knackered. Someone may well try to steal my camera Probably not. I think it's pretty safe around here. And to be honest, if anyone wants to try and carry that big, heavy tripod down the mountain, then they're more than welcome to try. It hurts my back and it's gonna hurt theirs as well. Sunset is in about three hours in that direction. There are a few clouds forming, which may help the time-lapse situation because up until now, it's been pretty thin on the ground. After what I told you earlier about quality and quantity and how I go for quantity over quality sometimes all that kind of stuff well today I'm going home with not much because I haven't really shot many good time lapses these clouds have just started to form which is pretty cool for weather geeks like me in particular we've got warm humid air coming off the coast this way in a very light wind and as it's being pushed up the mountains clouds are starting to form there and that could look pretty cool in a time lapse especially for the weather geeks but other than that it's fingers crossed for sunset and sunrise tomorrow morning. Until then, I'm gonna sit here, close my eyes and chill out. It's now just after sundown. Camera's over there, just behind my tent. Filming a long time lapse. It's been going for about two hours or so before sunset. It's going to have to be sort of holy grail style-ish. There's nothing to really see at night, but I've had to babysit the exposure quite a lot, giving it a tweak every 20 minutes or so. So I'll leave this go for a little bit longer, get some real duskness to it. it looks quite nice now. And then I'm going to turn in because I'm absolutely knackered. Last night's sleep in the car didn't help. So I'm going to finish this time lapse, sort my kit away and get some sleep in my dodgy tent uh, and then sunrise tomorrow morning I've got a shot planned which is going to be I'm not going to walk over there now but it's looking from that cairn there back towards Cribgock Ridge sunrise should be over that way that's it for tonight see you tomorrow morning good night morning folks how are you I'm just sat on a rock drinking a coffee admiring the sunrise which is spectacular this morning we've got a time lapse on the go. It's the first and last time lapse today because I need to go home. So we'll do this one and then I'm going to head off down the miners track, which is just here. And it's a, sh uh, I don't know, three or four miles shortish flat walk back to the car. It's nice and easy. It's nowhere near as challenging to as to how I'm going to be yesterday. So I'm looking forward to that. The views are spectacular this morning. I wish I could stay and film them, but I need to get home. Um, got a nice shadow of Mount Snowdon out to sea. Got all this mountain range lit up nicely in the morning light. Bear Grylls private island over there. You might just see it where my finger is. All looks fantastic. It's a beautiful place if you haven't been here, especially if you're in the UK and you've never been here, consider getting up here. You're missing out if you haven't. Beautiful, look at that. Thanks for watching folks, that's it from me. See you in the next video. Cheerio.